Um, I've, I've been asked to start just with a little background um, on you know, my, my career, uh, for those of you who weren't on the walk. Um, so I had the good fortune of working for 31 years for Essex County Greenbelt. So I ran that organization involved in land conservation work. And prior to that, I had, had a long career in the environmental field, um, including working with colleagues like Chris Leahy. So you, you heard from Catherine, he's gonna give a talk and walk later. And if you have a chance, I highly recommend it. For those of you who haven't experienced Chris, um, again, we were colleagues for decades. And one of the things I learned in my career was never follow Chris in a talk because he's, he's just so good. So I, I highly recommend that. Um, the other thing is a full disclosure, um, I'm not a geologist. Uh, I'm just playing one here this afternoon. Um, but uh, my background is in, in, in natural history. And um, you know, natural historians uh, will often use the term geology is destiny. And, and I think that's very apt, uh, especially apt to, to Cape Ann. Uh, when you think about our geologic history, and I'm gonna talk about that briefly in a moment, all of what we have here, the landforms uh, that are here at Cape Ann uh, have had so much influence over our fishing industry. The fact that we're nine miles out to sea, close proximity to the rich fishing grounds of the North Atlantic. Um, the fact that we have this incredible granite contributing to the to the quarry trade and of course um, as we're hearing this has been our centerpiece of the artistic community writers um, credible artists the first art colonies in america were out here on cape ann uh, and so we heard this morning you know paul Sh manship the great sculptors just down the street walker hancock is down the street uh, jenny burton started the um, the um, folly cove designers down the road so this place is drawn uh, people of talent, uh, particularly in the arts, uh, over centuries. And so we're so fortunate to have that here. So um, two major geologic events formed our, our terrain here. Uh, the first occurred uh, approximately 500 million years ago, so half a billion years ago. Cape Ann was at the uh, confluence of two of the plates, Earth's plates, um, a continental plate, excuse me, and an oceanic plate. And they collided. And so what happened was the oceanic plate pushed underneath that continental plate uh, and then created a huge amount of energy and heat and so on to create then a volcanic island. So very much what's happening present day in Japan and Indonesia and so on, the same kind of confluence of the, of the continents. And so Originally, Cape Ann was a volcanic island, and the science have, scientists have called it Avalonia. So if you really want to cross someone up and they say, where, where are you from? You can say, well, I'm from Avalonia. <laughs> uh, but the, the, that uh, continent, um, a volcanic continent, extended across the present-day northeast. And over time, the continents were pushing together and squeezing and squeezing. Uh, to create um, a single continent on the Earth known as Pangaea. Uh, and so this was all part of that terrain, um, formerly volcanic, moving together. And then the continents started to drift apart, uh, which they're doing um, to present day. And so parts of Cape Ann are now in Great Britain. They're now in Spain. You know, similar underlying geology that started here and has drifted apart. And again, that drifting is still happening. Uh, our our uh, continents are drifting apart at the rate about um, how your the growth of your fingernail. So each year, I mean, you think about over millions and millions of years, that adds up, but that you know is still happening uh, to this day. So you know that uh, continental drift moved things apart. Um, Avalonia was originally here, uh, but the granite that formed here came about over those hundreds of millions of years, where you had overlying sedimentary rock pushing, creating pressure on that underlying rock. And that then created the very dense granite that we have here today. So the reason for that, and it's again a condition that's found throughout parts of the Northeast, you know, New Hampshire, the Granite State, and so on, but it's been here. And then technically granite is intrusive igneous rock. So it's formed by crystallization, slow cooling uh, under the earth. And uh, it's principally made up of quartz, feldspar, and mica minerals. So 
again, all of those millions of years created that, that density um, of our granite that we have here in present day. A uh, couple of interesting factoids. Um, there are two minerals discovered here on Cape Ann. Uh, the first is called anite, named after Cape Ann, uh, discovered in uh, 1868. It's a, it's a form of mica. Uh, and the other is uh, danalite, which is named after a geology professor, J.D. Dana, and that was in 1866, and it's an iron uh, silicate. But both have their discovery and their origin here on, on Cape Ann. So the first big event, you know, half a billion years ago, all of hundreds of millions of years, all of that pressure created that very dense, very special Cape Ann granite. And again, conditions that are similar to other parts of the Northeast. But then what made our granite accessible and then led to the, the quarry industry is the fact that we had a more recent geologic event, which was the Laurentide Glacier. So of the last two million years, there's been as many as 20 ice ages in North America. So the last one was in geologic time, very recent. The Laurentide Glacier uh, covered all of what is now Cape Ann, went as far south as Long Island, Cape Cod, formed the Great Lakes and so on. So that came over us. And basically you think about that massive amount of ice, you know, where we are right now, up until about 13,000 years ago, would have been under a mile of ice. And so that scoured the surface and scraped away that surface and ultimately exposing the granite to make it then accessible and ultimately leading to our quarry industry here. So it's that um, recent, relatively recent geologic, geologic event of the ice age that exposed all this area and then contributed significantly to the landscape we have here. Um, the, you know, Glaciers, of course, form in cooling periods um, when you've got accumulation of snow, um, that um, the snow melt is not happening as uh, quickly as it's accumulating. Eventually, you have thousands of feet of that uh, snowfall. The underlying layer gets compressed, becomes ice, and that ice begins to move outward and forward from a base. And so that's how glaciers work to this day, and often maybe just traveling a, you know, a couple of feet a year, if that. So that's, that's what happened here. And as it moved across the uh, terrain, um, again, it's scouring the landscape. And throughout Cape Ann, um, you see evidence of that. Um, uh, on our exposed rock, for example, you can see what are called um, striations. Uh, and those are lines that were left by the gla glacier as it advanced, as it pushed across that terrain. They're always in the same direction. They're northwest, southeast because it, they reflect the, the flow of the, uh, uh, of the glacier. And uh, so it's part of what makes this area special, things we can go and look for. And again, so much of this landscape is related to present day and our art and so on. As an example, again, um, one of the great uh, sculptors of the 20th century, Walker Hancock, he lived just a stone's throw away from here, his home and uh, his studio uh, on the edge of one of the former quarries. Um, I had the good pleasure of knowing Walker near the end of his life. We used to take walks together, and he took me out on a portion of his, his property down the street here uh, called The Ledges. And it's a point where you see you can walk across that bare rock and see that striation. And, and he told me the great story of working with Robert Frost. He was doing a bust of Frost. And so Frost was here for a couple weeks, um, spending time with, uh, with Walker. And so Walker had taken Robert Frost out to that, that point, showing him the striations. Frost was so taken by that that he captured that in one of his poems. Uh, it's a poem called Directive. And the passage is, the ledges show lines ruled southeast, northwest, the chisel work of an enormous glacier that braced his feet against the Arctic pole. So, just, so again, one of so many examples of how this place has been inspired uh, artists. So striations. Um, and the other main event here at Cape Ann is the fact that as the glacier melted, and it's really melted away about 13,000, 12,000 years ago, so not very long ago. And interestingly, on the walk, we're talking about Native American populations. They started showing up um, about 11,000 years ago. So it wasn't long after that ice receded that we had humans uh, in this neighborhood. And you know, as you can imagine, as that ice is receding over thousands of years, that fresh water is coming into the oceans. 
So our ocean coastline here um, several thousand years ago was another 100 miles off where it is pres present day. And if you can picture that, it was a vast tundra. And there are stories of Native American villages under the ocean, current sea level rise, okay, sea level, that c occasionally can be spotted out there. Stories I've heard of Gloucester fishermen pulling up um, pieces of a mastodon or woolly mammoth and so on. That had been a, a place that people occupied, animals occupied, and they were hunted out there. So it took those thousands of years for the sea levels to come to the, the present coastline. Um, and also as the uh, glacier is receding, uh, it paused over Cape Ann. And so this is an area known as a terminal moraine. So it, it, instead of just melting on a, a regular pace over thousands of years, if it's melt, stop, melt, here it stopped for a while. And then as, if, as you know, when you look out in winter, your driveways, you know, at the end of the snow season, you start to see all that debris uh, that is left behind by the melting ice and melting snow. That's a terminal moraine. That's what happened here uh, on Cape Ann, and that's why we have boulders everywhere we go, and of course, no better place to see all this than, than in Dogtown. So again, technically it's called terminal moraine, um, leaving all these boulders here, but, but I think um, Joe Garland uh, said it best when he described Gloucester um, in, in, in this way, he said, this being the last place created, all the rocks not needed in the rest of the earth were dumped here. <laughs> no. So again, you know, Dogtown, perfect example that any of us that live here, we know you can't dig in the ground more than a foot without coming across you know, boulders or other you know, bedrock and so on. Uh, and another feature of the glacier um, that we have present here are what are called glacial erratics. So, you know, again, Dogtown, Whale's Jaw, Peter's Pulpit, and so on, these big rocks that are just laying on the surface, you know, how did they get there? Well, they're called erratics because they didn't start here. You know, so some of our boulders on the surface may have started as far away as Newfoundland, but then carried by the glacier, and then as the glacier melted, they were dropped on the surface here. So again, it's all part of that incredible terrain we have here that's inspired artists. Uh, Dogtown, again, is so representative of, of that. Um, so people, for example, um, like Edward Hopper, um, and Cape Ann Museum has this wonderful exhibit going on. If you had a chance to see it, you see some of the paintings he made of that granite uh, of Dogtown, although we're not quite sure it was actually Dogtown he made those paintings, but that's a story for another day. But uh, John Sloan, uh, Marston Hartley, you know, one of the great modernists from the 1930s, while so many artists were looking out to sea, he turned inland to Dogtown. He loved it, and he described it as a combination of Stonehenge and Easter Island. So, and you see, and you see his paintings at the museum, and, you, and it's fun now, again, as we talked about earlier, everything's come back to forest, but if you know where to look, you can find some of these places that the artist painted. The, the walls, so the, the stones, and so on that inspired people like Sloan and Hopper uh, and Hartley. So um, lots of other aspects uh, of the glacier, but those two events um, are really what formed what we have here, that, that initial period um, of the collection and cr uh, the crunching uh, and subduction is, is what it's called of those two continental plates, um, the pressure over all those hundreds of millions of years creating the dense now famous Cape Ann granite, the scouring of that surface um, with the uh, last of the great uh, glaciers and then all of what it left behind uh, as it retreated. Um, final um, comment I'll make is that um, this is an area that is um, seismically active and we don't think of it that way because we're so uh, much on rock and we don't feel it, but you know, a couple years ago in Rockport, and some of you may have had the same experience, it was quite a, a pretty good earthquake, you know, the classic, you know, the windows were rattling and, and it almost sounded like a, you know, a big truck going by. So occasionally we do have that activity. And in fact, we have uh, the third most uh, active fault uh, in North America here off our coast. Uh, San Andreas, of course, is number one. The Missouri Fault is number two. Uh, but Cape Ann is the third most active. Uh, and the, uh, there was a great earthquake the last of the great um, in, in, in um, European settlement time earthquakes of New England happened a few miles off the coast here, uh, 1755. 
and it was, you know, broke um, chimneys, uh, was felt as far away as Nova Scotia, as far south as South Carolina. So this is a place that is still seismically active. You know, it's again part of that uh, geologic uh, heritage we have here and still part of this, uh, this area to this day. Um, so with that, I will end there because I know we want to move right along very much and uh, I hope it's useful. Thank you.